This week on the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we're talking episode fours of the Book of Boba Fett and Peacemaker. Plus, the Batman's runtime is revealed. Godzilla is heading to the small screen. The Lord of the Ring prequels have a name and more. All in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, January 24th, 2022. This is Norm MacDonald, and you're listening to the, uh, uh, hang on, I got it here. Uh, it says, the Jock and Nerd Podcast, known for their series of gay erotica found on Amazon, huh? No? That's not that? Oh. <laughs> well, I fucked that up, I guess. Check. Check one. All right. This is Roy Crabs out there. Let's give it up. Hello, listener. What's up? Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd! My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. And he's a nerd. And joining us, a fella more challenging than your last round of Wordle. They call him Glib Fortuna, <laughs> but, but we call him... Rug boy, what's up? Look rugs? at my lobes. Feel my stroke. My lobes. Your lobes are pulsating. Is that normal? Yeah, my lobes are pulsating. You guys, what the fuck is Wordle? Wordle is that like a Ninja Turtle? Is that the is new that like Ninja Turtle? Wordle. Now, is that a I've new seen that for my friends, and I think it's like a word game. I just see like green and yeah, yellow why, and like black squares, squares, and I'm like, why are you showing squares. me this fucking graphic? I have no idea what the fuck you're talking well, about. A random number slash another random number. Like, do people know what that is? I like, guess I think they, I, do. I, I, they know what that just bunch of random squares is. Is this some kind is of shit that of I got? Gotta... Is, this, is this the deep state? Is this some I kind of know. secret code? Is this a conspiracy on Facebook? I feel like that there's the, there's a calendar and I have to press a button and I don't Please know. Stop showing me colored squares, <laughs> Facebook. The fuck is Wordle? And then the hatch is going to open and there's going to be some fucking smoke monster somewhere. Oh, oh yeah. You got to put the code in. I don't know thing. what the fuck that is. Fuck that show. Uh, anyways, <laughs> fuck that. Fuck that show. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your Wordle. Anthony, you're not playing the yeah. Wordle? Anyways. Who cares? I, I've see, I have friends that are playing it, and I was equally confused, but I guess it's a thing now because people are posting it in their stories and stuff. Like, it's something that you would recognize, so. Anthony's going to be in, like, knee-deep in this shit, like, in, like, a week. Somebody's <laughs> going to break and play the Wordle, I guarantee. Let's, we'll check back It's going to be either week. one of you two, because I am not fucking wasting my time with that shit. <laughs> Get your squares off my screen. Okay, let's talk yeah. about... We got some quick news to talk about, uh, and then we're going to review two great episodes of television. Let's do it. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. Like this pizza I'm looking at. Looks like the world. This pizza. We'll get to the pizza. No one even knows what I'm talking about. No, Cut this out. They, they, <laughs> gentlemen, the Batman's runtime has now been confirmed. Hollywood Reporter reporting... That including credits, it's going to be two hours and 55 minutes. Oh, shit. Uh, oh. Making it the longest Batman movie to date. Longer than even you thought the Dark Knight Rises was long. Remember all the shit that happened well, to that movie? This is with the credits, right? Yeah. So you're talking take out maybe eight or nine minutes for so it's content. Like, it's still pretty long. So it's two hours and like 50 minutes. <laughs> two forty seven. Forty seven, maybe. All yeah. Right. Oh, what do you think, Anthony? Too long? Not long enough? Give give me all of it. Geek boner. Geek give boner. it all to me. Yeah, I thought so. Matt Reeves doing Batman and getting almost three hours? Hell yeah. And plus, if you think about this logically, you've got three villains in this movie. Yeah, you've got, yeah. You're introducing a new-ish Batman, new yeah. character. New Gotham. Right. You've got a whole bunch of new stuff, so he's going to need time to develop all that and get you acquainted with all this stuff and make you feel comfortable, so... Three hours. I mean, Let's if, do it. If yeah, if you're starting a franchise, there's a certain amount of world building you gotta lay down. I just hope he uses the time well. <laughs> what is the big deal about this? I went to go see Lord of the Rings, and each one of them like three fucking hours long at least. Well, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I'll just wear a diaper when I go see. I mean, this movie. Didn't you go see Titanic? Five. Wasn't that three hours long? Oh, I did not fucking End- see that in the theater. Endgame was three hours. Endgame was three hours. Yeah. And I almost peed my pants. That's why there's the app Run P. It's very useful. I highly I recommend just- it. 
this is what I do. If I have to shit or pee during a movie, I just do it. And then I'll just go home and watch the pirated version. <laughs> and that's it. I'll, someone, there's a bootleg out there somewhere. Uh, I hear, so Matt Reeves must have a lot of fucking story to tell because apparently they screened to people a four-hour cut before they landed on this. Uh, oh, three hour he's like, fuck hmm. you, Snyder. I, right? I had the only person with a four-hour movie. He's trying to keep up with uh, Zack Snyder. Yeah, motherfucker. No, yeah. No, I mean. Release release the reeves cut give me more batman <laughs> also is what i say so that's great i hope uh i can't wait to see this fucking movie how long until that campaign starts do you think really what is it release the the reeves cut. the reeves cut of this yeah well now they know you told them well only if the movie sucks and then reeves comes out and says that wasn't my version. that wasn't movie. my movie i don't think that's gonna happen i don't know i yeah. think they trust him i think it's gonna be good march 4th based off the clip i just saw Yes, tickets go on sale February tenth. I found this clip on the on online. It's like a two minute scene from the movie, but there's some uh, uh, foreign words on the screen. It's very questionable how the someone got this clip, but it's the funeral scene, and it's not bad. Besides from the fact that in this two almost two and a half minutes, uh, Batten says exactly zero fucking words. Oh, shit. he's just standing around looking at things and looking like hmm. he's listening. It's all he kind of does. So. Eh, it- it's fine. You're, I like, de- you're definitely misrepresenting what's happening there, I mean, but all right. I mean, no, I like the mood. It's a funeral. <laughs> it's a funeral. Right. They're at a funeral, and you've seen the I mean, clip. he's not dancing. The car <laughs> crashes into the funeral scene. Well, you've seen that let, clip. Let me, let me elaborate a little more. It's a scene where it looks like this kid's father dies, so Batman's there, and he, but he's there as Bruce Wayne, and he's already relating to that situation, and then there's a lot of tension because a car crashes into the funeral, and in that car is a guy that looks like was also a hostage to Riddler and has a message for Batman. And everyone's kind of like freaked out about what's going on. There was actually a lot of tension in that little two minutes. Well, yeah, there. He's, uh, he's got a bomb strapped to him and the phone is ringing. It's duct taped to his hand. Uh, and then I thought they were going to show the fucking explosion, but then it's oh, ruining so. the movie for me. You fucks. It's not. It's like a fucking <laughs> everybody's seen this in the fucking trailers. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's in the trailers. I don't really pay attention to the trailers that much. Uh, no, this movie's going to be great. Here is why the best meaning the worst movie promotion I have seen to date making this the best thing ever is the Batman is uh, joining forces with Little Caesars. To, uh, they've made a new food item. It's called the Bat Calzone. Oh, shit. Uh, it is a Batman, apparently a Batman-shaped calzone. Listener, if you look at it your- It is not. If you look at your podcast app right now, <laughs> it will be the artwork in, in the image. It, is, it does not what look like What does this look like, fellas? It looks like a wordle. It looks like know. a wordle, indeed. Um, mm. It looks like not, it looks, it does not look like a bat. Looks like Mothra. Damn. It kind of it, it it looks like a bird, maybe, but they miss the ears. It looks like I folded a pizza. I don't understand how this works. I don't know. It looks kind of like a diaper. <laughs> you need There's to like, yeah, you it does see, actually look like a diaper. It looks like an open diaper. It, you could see the yeah. pizza, the cuts of the slices. So it's like pizza and then calzone on the side. It makes no sense. It's seven ninety nine, and they think this is going to be a great idea. That's a pretty good deal, though. Seven ninety nine so? for that. Yeah, it, it does come with crazy sauce, so maybe that makes up for it. Yeah, Didn't we have Little Caesars ranked as, the, or no, we had Pizza Hut ranked as the worst, no, but right? It, it, yes, it t- Little Caesars was at the bottom of the list. I totally oh, tied into Little that. Little Caesars is the shittiest I heard. Right? Oh, is that what it is? Okay, mm-hmm. I haven't had Little Caesars in, as the kids say, a minute. Yeah. It's like Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Hey, don't don't you fucking knock Chuck E. Cheese pizza. <laughs> that was fucking good. All right, <laughs> that and that and the robotic band. Listen, all right? I you had that Chuck E. Cheese pizza when you were like fucking nine years old. Now. After you've had like good pizza, go back there and have. All right, it. I challenge I gotta, well, you. I got to find a reason to go. Back. And Ron, go throw your birthday over there. Oh, we can have a little <laughs> Jack and Nerd party at uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Oh my god, there is one right over here, actually, down the street from where they'll I live. be. The place will be crawling with cops within five minutes. I fucking old they're gonna, in there. They're gonna let me in. <laughs> How quickly do you think this Bat Calzone will give you the shits? What do you think? Minute, I'm looking, minutes, just looking bites. at it's making me have to take a shit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so, I mean, I think this is amazing. It I rem- feel percolation happening. Rem- Rugs, do you remember the summer of 1989? It was fucking Batmania. There was bootleg Batman shit everywhere. Everybody was wearing Batman t-shirts. There was Batman yeah. cereal. That was kind of amazing. I was, uh, what was I, like 13 years old? It was fucking dope. 
Uh, the kids need yeah. something like that nowadays to enjoy this pizza. We'll do it. We just need just mass market bootleg <laughs> merchandise everywhere. I yeah, think I, so. When, Why not? When I think of, but this is a rated R movie, isn't it? Or no, it's PG thirteen. It's PG thirteen. Okay, three hours long, and you can enjoy a bad yeah, perfect calzone. for kids. Yeah. They're gonna love it. Okay, here's some news. I think you guys will have geek boner about possibly. Yeah, geek boner. Our resident Godzilla fans, Apple TV, and Legendary. We'll be bringing Godzilla and the Titans Monsterverse Titans to the t- to your TV. Apple TV live action series in the works um, about, well, here's the log line. Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking new reality that monsters are real, the series explores one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. It's about Monarch. Anthony. Geek Boner. Floppy John. Well, what do you think? I'm happy. I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but I'm at least happy that this is happening. I think uh, this is uh, just another. This wouldn't ha- this, this wouldn't be happening if Kong versus Godzilla didn't do well and basically sure. showed that movies can still make money during a pandemic. Because that was the first one. Everyone. It happened a while ago, but that was the first one that actually proved things can happen in a movie theater. And they showed us the hollow earth and I, you can do more stories about all these things that they set up. Right. I mean, I'm not necessarily all that intrigued by what like, kind of stories, but I'm just happy that we're going to get more Godzilla made in America. And Apple TV Plus will probably put some money behind it because they don't have a ton of brands that they can market. And this is one that's recognizable and did well in its last outing in the movies. See, yeah, I think it's good for Apple because they don't really have a big roster of stuff. They have hardly anything on there. What like, they, but the the, so, the the stuff they have is mostly very good. Yeah, mostly. Well, well, you can make it really, you can curate it really well and have really good stuff if you're not juggling a thousand things and spinning a bunch of different and plates. The, like they have like a trillion dollars, so the the budget, they'll right. be a healthy budget. They got the money to throw at this. So I think that's a good home because Apple could make it like a flagship show, and they don't really have a big. Uh, effects budget show i mean they have for all mankind and they have c and then they have that that other one with the um uh, foundation ted that's lasso but that's not a big oh, La- I, just, yeah, I, just, I just finished but, um, foundation oh you did yeah oh, okay but um yeah so those are like not super effects heavy like with monsters and shit they just have like uh cg backgrounds and stuff uh green screening but um I think Apple can invest a lot of money. Now, the interesting thing about this is that they got rid of Max Bornstein, who was the uh, kind of like the creative guru behind like the last few MonsterVerse oh. movies. Hmm. And they replaced him with Chris Black and uh, Matt Fraction, which is a comic book writer. Oh, that Matt, yeah, Fraction, Matt Fraction, Matt Fraction. Wow. Frac- yeah, Matt- Hawkeye, Matt Fraction. Yeah. And isn't the, the, the black guy? <laughs> That's his name, <laughs> Isn't right? he from... Uh, He's done Star Trek, right? Oh, yes. Enterprise. And he's yes. done uh, a show called Outcast. I think I yeah, watched from, a few episodes. Yeah, he, that's a scary show. So, like, he did, like, he did hard sci-fi with, with Star Trek. That's, like, the most, like, you know, sci-fi thing you can do, I guess. And then he did Outcast or whatever that was. That was, like, a horror thing. He's worked on Mad Men, which is, like, straight drama, which is, you know, it's good to have a showrunner that understands all these different, can navigate all these different things. But, um when I heard that, that it was centered on a family, I was like, all right, this sucks balls. What? There's a family in this? Because we, we 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 don't need another family. We need, I don't know why. I think they're doing this because they need to have some kind of kid involvement, you know, to try and reach that market. They're, you know, this is obviously, oh, we're checking off boxes for demographics. We're doing this and doing that. Like, we don't need to do that. The show's supposed to be taking place right after the first Godzilla movie. Like 2014. Oh, really? That's the one in San Francisco. Oh. So at that point in time, now it's weird because at that point in time, um, uh, they, the general public doesn't know the existence of monsters. And so this puts everything out into the forefront. Like, okay, all of a sudden, oh, we're living with fucking monsters. There's Mutos. There's Godzilla. Holy shit. Like, and now that could be interesting. Like the news is now finding out about it. People are now researching it and, Finding out about it, that's that could be all cool, and that could be where the, all this explosion of finding the other monsters and the other titans and stuff happens. The only thing is that continuity-wise, in King of the Monsters, they say that Godzilla's been missing for a bunch of years, five years. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, if they want to keep it in continuity, like Godzilla can only show up in a few places where like 
the general public wouldn't see him. Like he can't show up in a major city. He can be like underwater in hollow earth, some remote Island where like, no, where they don't <laughs> some third world area where they don't have the news or like they don't have the internet or whatever. And that's basically it. So it's going to be weird how they handle Godzilla. If they're going to keep the continuity, but I don't think the monster versus that, you know, after Godzilla versus Kong, they like throw they wipe their ass with the continuity and they don't care. Right. But so I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I feel good because Apple it has enough money to pump into this show. I feel good because, um, you know, HBO kind of screwed them by uh, doing the doing the digital release on the, on, you know. Right. And they they kind of lost movies money on it. lost a lot of money, yeah. So I think the move is they're taking the MonsterVerse to Apple for the show, and they're probably still going to do movies with WB. Who knows? Yeah, because it's weird that it's not for HBO Max. You would think that's yeah, well, it but it's legendary and legendary. Although has a deal with WB, that I don't. It's not necessarily exclusive. Yeah, no. with H with the uh, WB. I, I mean, I think uh, I'm looking at like the shows on Apple TV Plus, and there's they have a lot of shows that are rated really well. They have a, they have some good original movies that are rated really well. Yeah, that tragedy yeah. of Macbeth, yeah, doing really well, and that came Denzel, out on Apple TV. Denzel Plus. Washington as Macbeth, that's amazing. As William Shakespeare, yeah, yeah. That's cra- or yeah, Mac- as Macbeth, Macbeth um, yeah. Yeah, I, and the only the only thing I'd say too is, I, you know, I've heard the arguments of from Japanese Godzilla fans that uh, this isn't the the most you know connected or the most uh, true to the origins. The only argument I'd have against that is. Godzilla's origins and the portrayal of Godzilla have changed basically for every story. Like you had him, the original story, which is the original story, but then moving after that, you know, you had a whole era in Showa movies where he was a savior in the Heisei area where he was uh, back to being kind of a menace, but then slowly getting turned into an anti-hero savior. Then you had the Millennium Era, which every movie had its own twist on it. So there's every story has its own spin on who Godzilla is, so I, I don't really see that I, I think there's a general essence of Godzilla, right? You think, all right, it's a giant monster. It's the king of the monsters. It's, a, you know, it usually comes and, you know, it usually comes and regardless of it, if it cares about mankind or not, it does it. Does it, it goes, he likes to fight. He likes to come in. Absolutely. He's always looking to kick some ass. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. I mean, if you really... Like you could give it all the fucking subtext that you want. He's defending the the planet. He cares about the earth. He doesn't like blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, he just likes to fuck shit up. He's like he can't wait to fuck shit up. He never was like ah, I'm too tired. No, he's always like all right, there's somebody fucking with me. Let's go. So I think that that's the essence, and they and they have captured that. They've made Absolutely. him this alpha predator that will fucking anything that just you know even piques his interest to kick its ass he's gonna go and do it and he just can't stop himself and i think if you were to tie him back to the origins in that japan had established for him i just don't think that resonates with the american audience or if you were he's like the the inter he's the he's the embodiment of the the nuclear war like that's just that's that's a that's a very japanese thing and i i don't think that necessarily i i am like i enjoy that but i don't think for the mainstream American fans, I don't think but, they, they want to see that the new American. But fans. that's also you paint yourself in a corner when you do that, because at that point in time, he becomes a problem that we have to solve. Mm-hmm. Right. Godzilla is attacking us. We have to kill him. All right. Now, and if you do it this way, you have a reason for him to exist. And we and he's just an animal and he's not trying to kill us. He's existing. And we're just and everybody's all humanitarian, humanitarian and you know, don't kill the animals, let them have their own ecosystem, blah, blah, blah. So we're like taking like this that whole kind of altruistic approach to these animals and like, OK, this is an animal. We're mm, just Godzilla preservation society. Yes. Yeah. Or just, you know, we have to live in, in in unison with these things or figure out how to to keep them asleep or whatever or contain them. That's a far more interesting thing. Because you can do that over a period of movies instead of always trying to just, you know, the movies, we're trying to kill him. We're going to try and kill him. We have to figure out how to kill him. And yeah, that's, that's it. That, and that kind of, it's cool for one movie, but you can't really do an established universe of that. Like, that could continues, you know? Apple TV does do sci-fi good. 
for all mankind is great. Like I said, I finished Foundation based on Isaac Asimov stuff. That was fucking great. Uh, there is one show. It's called Invasion. I don't know if I could recommend this show. I'll tell you why. It's called Invasion. I watched like the first four episodes. There was no fucking invasion. Oh, they shit. was just they kept shit following these people, and like there was hints that something weird is happening. There's no, I didn't see anything. I think it's one of those shows where it's like it gets to the end of the first season, and then you finally have the invasion. And if that was the case, I'd be very mad. So, so if you I don't finally know see invasion. Godzilla at the end in the last episode, then you'll be mad. Well, the <laughs> same thing. It's like how much Godzilla are you going to see? Really, with a uh, you know, if there's a family. We if gotta, you think about Game of Thrones, right? Right. They had the dragon in maybe like three or four episodes for like a few seconds. Yeah. That's probably what we're going to get. That, that's the only concern, real concern I have. I mean, I think the human characters, if we're going based off track record, might be kind of shitty. They're like, always that, bad that, in these movies. What can, we, what can we compare as a show that has CG monsters like Stranger Things, A Witcher? I mean, those are two big sh- shows with... um. With CG I was, monster, I mean, the one I Mando, was Game of Thrones. Yeah, I would Man, think Mando is pretty good, but Mando is not. Boba I mean, the Fett. scale, yeah, the scale of the monsters is just so different. Well, look, talking about scale and size of shows, it leads right into our next thing here. Uh, we're gonna shift a little to Lord of the Rings. I'll tell you why. The Amazon prequel. They've been working on this prequel. They finally came out with this name. The name is called R- Lord of the Rings. The Rings of Power is the name of this prequel show. It's a little generic. I will say that about the name Rings of Power, but they put out this teaser, right? Do you guys see this? It's pretty cool. You see like molten metal going in wood, carving in the name and ice and things freezing over and, and there's smoke and close up water. Fucking phenomenal. Uh, and then I found out that all that none of that was CGI. That was all fucking practical effects in this thing. I'll have a link to this video. They show you how they do it. Uh, I thought that's wild. That's awesome. I didn't know that. All of that, like, it gave me a Game of Thrones vibe, but this is all practical. Why I think this show, the only reason I'm interested in this show is because Amazon first paid $250 million just for the rights to make shows for Lord of the Rings. And then they said this: the budget for season one was almost $500 million. Oh, shit. So what are we at? A quarter of a billion dollars. I want to see... What the most expensive show in history fucking looks like? It's got to. What be is something. it supposed to be? A prequel? It is. Yeah, it's a continuation. It, it probably is going to be uh, the creation of the Rings of Power and how they're distributed throughout all of Middle Earth, and um, you get to see like basic, like the all of the all of the different races get rings, and then all, of course the Dark Lords also get them. So there's and, like twenty rings initially. Yeah. Uh, and it says, beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters, both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared reemergence of evil to Middle Earth. This is a prequel from the darkest depths of the I Mystic think it's going to be blood Sauron blood. before he becomes evil. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but they haven't put anything out. They put out, like, one photo, uh, and that was it. This is the most expensive TV show that's ever going to get made. I'm super curious even though I'm, I can't, you know, I like Lord of the Rings now. I have a new appreciation for it. It's great. It is one of the best. You know, it's it's one of the best stories. It's 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 endured for such a long time. It's such a simple story, right? You have to destroy the the One Ring, and that's and everybody has to help this guy do it, and that's it. That's the story. That's that simple. This story is obviously going to be a, probably a lot more complicated because it's not about something that simple as taking a, a ring and bringing it to a, a volcano and dropping it in there. Uh, it's about uh, more like a game of Thrones type thing where it's about power and the distribution of the power and who gets it, who gets to wield the ring. Yeah, that sounds good. So it's going to be way more complicated than the simple Lord of the Rings. I mean, is, is Lord of the Rings simple? No, it's about the, you know, trying, having this pure uh, being, have to shoulder this thing that's corrupting it slowly as as time goes on. And you see, he's kind of going through this character. It's such a character battle for Frodo. Like he's got to like shoulder this responsibility and he's got to will himself to do this. And he wants to give up and he's tempted by the ring. 
and all this stuff. And all these people have to like rally around this person to try and get this done. Cause he's the only one who can do it. Cause no one else can touch the ring because it will tempt them. It's your- so, I mean, it, it, even though it's simple, it's very complicated. But Classic so, hero's journey. That yeah, also, so Lord yeah. of the Rings is deep. And so if any of that depth is in this show, I'm fucking sitting there and watching it, especially with all this money they're pouring into it. It's wild that he made that first movie for, I think, under $100 million. And now this is literally a billion-dollar show that Amazon is putting on. Uh, it'll be September of this year, I think, the show wow. debuts. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and then last thing to tie into our first TV show review Yes. No, no, no thoughts for me. What, well, are you? What do you? What are your no. thoughts on Lord of the Rings? Yeah, <laughs> I got nothing, nothing. Right, I thought so. <laughs> Floppy I've John. only seen one of the movies. Yes, the one we had to. You made me watch the first one. Yeah, so watch yeah. the others. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. He's not gonna have time. No, yeah, they're, they're long. They're very. They're very long. And I, the, the first one I had to watch on a laptop. Remember that? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. That is probably that was a lot of walking. The, the Helm's Deep is the fucking badass battle. Oh my god, that's later. the worst way to watch the movie on a laptop. Though. I, I do have to watch yeah. those other two, but I'm but I'm not in the uh, I'm not the man I was last year. You're not uh, Mr. Oscar's Anthony I'm not, anymore. I'm not Roman Polanski. <laughs> well, and I think what, what happened was <laughs> Anthony was out doing his thing, and he was kind of getting like, oh, this is all there is to life, you know, just going out and partying every night. Let me, let me like, get into this movie thing. Then he gets hit with COVID, and he's like, fuck, I want to go out. Uh, <laughs> when can I get the fuck out? <laughs> fuck these movies. Yeah, there's no time for Frodo and the gang. Well, Andy, yeah. what do you think about this? Wait, wait, one more thing, yeah. though. I think this this show, is. I think it'll do really well. I think it might be huge. It might be fucking huge. I think huge. It, might be the, it might be the next thing. It, it, sh- it should be. It's It's got the money. It's got the Amazon behind it. It's got... Amazon's a network. Amazon's a streamer that has proven that they can do well for, with good TV shows. It's got Lord of the Rings name behind it. Hey, this is get, also get not as a well known of a of a property. Like everybody knows the Lord of the Rings story, they don't know the Cimmerillion or, or any of the earlier stuff. So uh, there's less like you know people analyzing the shit out of it. There, of, of course, there's people reading it right now, so they can analyze it when it comes out. But I mean, for the most part, the general public hasn't read those books it's so. gonna be interesting to watch this and then maybe watch the game of thrones prequel over on hbo and see which one who's got more money who's using it better but you know wheel of time was well there would be like this is the next game of thrones everything is the next game of thrones and nothing a is wheel actually of time been, is not the next game of thrones yeah, nothing has actually been the next game of thrones no. maybe until the next game of thrones i don't know maybe it's this rings of power though it's such a generic title you think the Green Lantern's going to pop out? It sounds, yeah, or it sounds like a, a wrestling event on uh, <laughs> Monday Night Raw, Rings of Power. I don't know. Yes. Jesus. Uh, Anthony, you love Star Wars. What do you think of this news? Do you know that Ahsoka show they're making for the Disney Plus with the Rosario Dawson? Mm-hmm. They've just added Mary Elizabeth Winstead. You know her from, uh, she was in Birds of Prey. She was was she? she? Yeah, she was Huntress. She was in Scott oh. Pilgrim. She played Ramona Flowers in Scott Pilgrim. Oh, she yeah, was yeah. in she was in Death Proof, which was that she was very very attractive. Oh, that. she was in that. That was the Tarantino directed one, right? Yeah, yeah, Death Proof. Was she? She's. In, I've seen Live Free or Die Hard. I think. Yeah, yeah. and that one as well. Yeah, and that movie Kate on Netflix, which I heard is kind of good. I have yet to watch it. It's not good, but it's it's a fun watch. It's for what it is. Is she badass in that? She does kick a lot of ass in it. Right. Yes, it's Jane Wick, basically. Oh, nice! I like it's that. Kate Wick, whatever yeah. you want to call it. So yeah, no, the this Ahsoka show is going to have Mary Elizabeth Winstead as well as uh, uh, Hayden Christensen is coming back as Darth Vader, and they've cast Sabine Wren, Latasha Liu Bordizo. What is uh, Sabine Wren from Rebels? Who that? Yeah. Nice. I, so, so maybe Rugs. What do you think? Anthony, of course, has. I'm kidding. You don't care. Yeah, I've I've really no thoughts at all. So they, Nat, you say Tasha Natasha Leo Bordizo is Sabine Wren, and I think they're gonna have uh, the Mina Masood play Ezra Bridger, and it's gonna be about them looking for Ezra and General Thrawn and all that stuff on this show. Oh, okay. Yeah, she goes. Uh, that's a good. That's a good pick for for Sabine. Definitely. Well, what do you think about Mary Elizabeth Winstead? We don't know who she's playing, but maybe she's playing uh, like a friend I, or a bad person. Maybe she could be Hera. 
She could be in green makeup. You think she'll do it? Oh, or like Dr. Wasn't there Mara Jade, Dr. Afra? What if they do that? Oh, sh- Dr. Afra? I don't think so. Maybe, yeah. That could be a possibility, but I think she's going to be Hera. Remember, remember from Rebels? She was the one that drove the ship. I think I remember. Okay. Well, there's lots she, of Star she had Wars the lobes. She had the yeah. lobes, you oh, know? Oh, the lobes. Sexy lobes. Anyways, that's going to be, uh, that show's down the line. But I love Rosario Dawson was badass as fucking Ahsoka, so. She got two fucking lightsabers. I, I mean, I, I'm all in for this show. Right. I want to. I like a Jedi. Let's do it. Yeah, she is another. Let's get a Jedi show. Okay. Uh, before we get to more Star Wars, listener, join the conversation. We have a Facebook group. It's called Jock and Nerd Nation. It's a closed group just for our listeners. It's a lot of fun. A lot of news. A lot of fun. Geeky fucking memes get posted in there. Have fun. Chop it up with everyone. Join today. <laughs> Let's get to the book of Boba Fett, the journey. Uh, the chapters keep continue. This is a long book. Episode four, chapter four, the gathering storm. Here's your spoiler alerts. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It is to be spoiled. <laughs> this one written by John Favreau, again, directed by this dude, Kevin Tancheron. I think that's how you say his name. Oh, he is. Yeah, I've, I've heard that guy's yeah, name before. Yeah, I've, I've heard his name because he has directed um, uh, Agents of Shield. Uh, he directed an episode of Inhumans. Let's not hold that. And he let's hold that against him. But also the Flash. Didn't he Arrow. do Mortal Kombat stuff? Ah, uh, he did do a Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, what is this movie? It's called Rebirth. Yeah, it's the short film. Oh, it's a short film from 2010. Yeah, oh. Hellstrom Warrior. Uh, he's done a lot of action shows, Legends of Tomorrow, 12 Monkeys, Supergirl. So the guy, uh, CW level stuff, CW, but he knows this kind of, you know, plotting and pacing for these kind of genre shows. Uh, Anthony, what happens in the gathering storm? Trying to think about this one. (laughs) Think about the storm. (laughs) So uh, when we left off, Boba Fett was in the past. Trying to well, he his whole uh, the Tusken Raiders were all taken care of. They were all dead. They were all killed, and he wants revenge on them. And he finds um, Fennec Shan. Yes, right? Fennec Shan. She's all fucked up, and he needs to help her. He wants to help her because she got fucked up from. And they're they're spinning this from in the Mandalorian when she got fucked up in the Mandalorian. Correct. So he helps her and then she's kind of indebted to him forever and she helps him take out the bikers and with that we also get in the present that there's this looming war between uh fucking mando or not mando she's (laughs) boba fett and the pikes and he needs an army and he's recruiting people and they don't want to help him so he needs an army and that that's i think that's it right is that that pretty much sum it pretty up? Pretty much. They're still moving the pieces around, and I believe... You got Black Kristen sh- hanging out. You, you know, some Black Kristen is about there, it. but I believe, yeah, they, they basically have ended the flashbacks, and we have caught up to everything that happened to him since he came out of the Sarlacc pit to now. So I think the flashbacks are done. Yay. Talk about that. And, and you get a... Go ahead. No, no, we just talk about whether that was the right choice for these first four episodes or whether they could have just showed it in order. I don't know what would have worked better, but then, well, you also get teases. Mandalore Mando is definitely showing up because you get the oh, music. That's the great. End. Yes. Well, they need a team because they got to get, a I team think at together. some point he gets out of that back to tank and says that he's completely healed. So you don't, right. that means that no more, no more back to tank. Oh, okay, good. He wouldn't. So look, the flashbacks, no more flashbacks. No more flashbacks. We're caught up. We saw stuff from Mandalorian. Um, from the gunslinger episode, uh, I, I did think it was interesting. What did you guys think of the mod shop? These guys are called mods, right? He takes her to this modder, a mod artist. Did you know who this guy was, Anthony? No, am I supposed to? No, have you heard of Thundercat? The, the Thundercats? Yeah. No, not the Thundercats. Oh, you don't know. This guy's a musician. The g- mod with the gold dreads. His name is Steven Thundercat Bruner. Rugs, did you know this? Yeah, I know he's a musician, but I don't know anything. About I don't know which music he does. He was a he's a bassist and like uh, and a racist. Uh, Jesus he's a racist. Christ, he's a, ba- a b- b- bassist. But what did you think of like we go in there and there's like fucking uh, industrial electronic fucking music? It was like Nine Inch Nails or Prodigy. So I was like, the fuck. 
This is different for Star like Wars. Synth wave is playing. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of synth they're definitely music. Uh, getting away from the norm. Like, I wonder if Lucas was watching this, if he would have approved of some of these changes they're doing in the show, which is just sort of the tone with the Power Ranger biker gang yeah. and now the synthy kind of music here. That was something I've never heard of the Star Wars thing, but I didn't mind it. I kind of liked it. I like Thundercat. I looked up some of his music. He's not bad. I've been wanting them to go into this stuff for a while, but I just don't like how it's being executed. Yeah. Like, I've been saying this for the longest time. I'm like, Star Wars has, like, so many things going for it. It's got creatures, and these creatures can have abilities, and they have cybernetics, and they have Jedi powers, and they have all this advanced technology. They got droids and AI. Yeah, so they got so many things that could happen. Let's start using it. And they've done it, but like it's kind of like a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit clunky and not as cool as it could be. But I still appreciate the effort. And I know that they're probably going to fine tune it as they go. So, after what has it been? Four episodes? Yes. It's been four episodes. So. As the as the resident non Star Wars guy that is watching this purely because I'm obligated to, I have to say so far, we can talk about how they've structured it with the flashbacks, but so far, the show is kind of boring. Uh, and I'll, here's why. Mm-hmm. Here's why the show is kind of boring. You've you've given me all this hype that Boba Fett is this badass character, and for four episodes, first off. I don't think he's doing a bad job, but he is what he is. You've got a sixty-year-old fat guy playing, but <laughs> oh, he's not gonna, fat that fat anymore. You think he's, he's not that fat, but he's 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 a little bit overweight and he's sixty-something years old. Yeah. He's supposed to be the baddest assassin in the in the world, and for four or whatever the fuck he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be a badass. Everyone loves him. Everyone's been wanting to see Boba Fett come back. I don't know why, but they do, and I still don't know why everyone wants to see him come back because what I'm seeing on screen is this sort of like. Monk, like I just want to be respected and rule, but in a peaceful way, kind of thing. Well, we find out finally like, though why. No, he no, wants I don't give a fuck. Him. I don't care. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. I don't give a fuck why we find out. <laughs> None of this is badass. And the scene that kills it for me is when he sits down these three gangs or whatever the fuck they are, and he goes, "I'm got an upcoming war." I'm paraphrasing. I got an upcoming war. I need your help. And they go, nope. And he goes, okay, well, at least can you not interfere? And I'm like, okay, so this badass character that you've been hyping up is like acquiescing to these guys and being like, oh, well, if you're not going to help me, can you at least just not even like take a side, please? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's clearly not Disney. a badass I don't, character. Yeah, I don't think. Did I don't he think say that? Do because that. I thought they they were like, what's stopping us from killing you? By the way, it was great to finally get some Godfather War Console type mob shit, you know, finally in the show. Yeah, yeah but yeah, it's it's Godfather War Godfather stuff. But the Godfather would have been like, oh, you're not fucking helping me. I'm going to have one of you eaten well, right now. Well, that's why he placed the table right above the yeah, Rancor pit. And but by the end, it comes, the resolution him. is him going, well, don't interfere. Just don't interfere. No, they all they all joined him after the fucking rancor. They were like, uh, "Okay, no, they don't." What are you That's talking what about? They said they didn't join him. They go, "We're not." Well, we won't interfere in the war. We won't take a side. Oh, they said they will remain neutral. Is basically what yes. they said. Oh, I thought they said that's that, not badass. Know. That's it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I. I mean, it, this while the show has been slightly disappointing, I do see how is. It, but is this not also like character development? Because really, the badass Boba. That we wanted is kind of a one note character. We didn't get any of that. This is him. But you're changing. not you getting any of the badass character. No, he's changing. He's well, changing. Okay, let's just put bit. this in perspective here. Now, we preempted this Boba Fett show with Mandalorian, which right. is the Boba Fett show. Right. It had a high bar. It had a high bar set with and the Mandalorian. Din Djarin isn't a badass, like as far as a great badass, but he's pretty badass when he needs yeah, to be. He fucks up all Absolutely. the time, though, too, which is kind yeah. of endearing. Yeah, he, he gets his ass kicked all over the place, but he ends up pulling pulling through at the end. Um, the thing that disturbs me is that when we do get the our first glimpse of Fat Boba Fett in The Mandalorian, he's fucking taking motherfuckers out. Yeah. 
He's beating the shit out of people. With that like, was a good intro. You know, like even as you know, he's kind of like out of shape and whatever, but they it was directed well, and he seemed to have like a lot of high impact. Um, and he was pretty deadly. So I was like, okay, well, this sets the tone for Boba Fett. And then the last time that you see Boba Fett, he rolls up on fucking Bib Fortuna and just blows his brains out. Right. That's the very last thing you see. And you're like, all right, show me this guy. So now you're like, all right. And what? Because he takes a bath. He's cool now. He's cooled down. <laughs> he goes in that back to tank and that's it. Yeah. Like if they take his nuts. Uh, what happens? Yeah. Uh, but I so, get that he doesn't want. He says, I'm tired of being alone and being a hunter. The Tuscans showed me that I really want a tribe. I want to lead a family like that tracks to me. He's changing. He's doing oh, yeah, something. If you know anything about the mafia or the Sopranos or any of that stuff, the family doesn't make you soft. It makes you harder. Because now you got something to fight for. You know, now you got something to lose. Now you got to be even more paranoid. This motherfucker's way too calm and doesn't give a fuck. Like when you're when you start putting together a family and you got people to protect and you got a fucking jurisdiction, you start your shit starts to get like, you know, sensitive about things. You start getting like antsy about people. You're not just like, ah, oh, whatever, it's cool. Like, what are you, like, fucking Drexel in True Romance? He's just waiting cool. for your opportunity. He's very laid back and cool <laughs> Sitting style that, of that leadership. Looking at a pair of titties. <laughs> you know, like, he's not. I've seen that movie. I, th- I think he's doing a good job playing who he's asked to play. I just I just don't think he's at all that all that so, appealing. Okay, that, one, yeah, one more thing, yeah. too. One more thing. The other thing that I have, a, like, a, a pawn thing about I have a problem with is you, you did this job where you you built up the Tuscan Raiders. From what I understand... As something more than what they've been, right? In, in Star Wars, they've always just been kind of in they gave a thing. Them depth, yes. But they gave them depth, right? And they're now this thing. Yeah. But they became you gave them depth only to kill them off screen. You killed all of them. You gave them depth just to grow Boba Fett's character, and then the revenge scene that he gets on the bikers that was great. I thought is so ant. I thought it was so anticlimactic. Really? He just he just. I want to see him fucking slaughter those By people. Hand. I don't want to see yeah. him blow yeah. them from the yeah. air in two seconds and go, oh, we're done with that. So, like, that whole storyline for me was just, like, you could have milked that even more. But now it's just, like, you did all that just to kill them, just to, like, grow Boba Fett's character, like, an inch more. Dude, the, but, okay, I was, I, I thought I was satisfied when he fucking mowed them down. The look on his face was great, but he's riding around on slow-ass Banthas. How else he's going to catch up with these motherfuckers? These <laughs> Banthas don't move very fast. It's quite annoying. I don't know why he just doesn't steal a fucking speeder. Okay, I, oh, here's the other thing that's surprising. The right, You're right about the writing, and this is... It seems like you really like the I, show. No, I know, I like it, but I have issues with it. Like, John, I don't hate it. I just think that, yeah, there is... Parts of me that wish that it was a little bit more badass. That's all. Yes. There's one scene in this episode I'll get to that is glaringly. I'm like, something's going on here. I trust John Favreau that he has a vision that he's trying to take us somewhere to the end. And hopefully all this pays off. I think this is just Disney. But exactly. That's what I was going to say. I feel there's a lot of Disneyfication happening. There's a comment later from a listener. He'll mention one thing. Here's where I saw it happening. So first of all, did you notice his his ship is now called the Fire Spray Gunship? Uh, that's the yeah, name. That. That's the name. Not yeah. slave one anymore. Slave one, yes. right? So when they sneak in to get the gunship, they enter through the kitchen, and there's these kitchen droids, right? And that's great. You have the one that spins all the knives like Grievous. Fun stuff. But then there's this whole scene with this fucking cute rat catcher droid and Boba Fett bumbling around like an idiot. Uh, chasing this droid, and the droid just turns itself off. It pops up later, and I'm like, "What was the fucking point of this? This is entirely enough." You're gonna what? sell some of those toys. They gotta sell those fucking toys. I think because that thing was in Rebels. I think he pops back up. I think did they force him to be like, "You gotta make." I was like, "What? What is this scene? This is entirely unnecessary." I actually have to comment on that scene too. So you have that scene where he's gotta he's gotta get the slave one or whatever the fuck it's called now. And there's, you know, you you establish there's a shit ton of guards here. Yeah. How the hell are they going to get in? And then the next cut, they're in. Oh, barely an inconvenience at all. There's like, yeah, (laughs) as as your boy from Screen Run, barely an inconvenience. Like, there's no tension in that scene. You could have made that like a really badass scene where they're both teaming up and they both infiltrate in and they have to like 
do things and you like you show that they're doing things. But instead, you go, oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad guys in here. We can't use the guns. Escape had some. How are we going to get in? Escape had all oh, the guns in. and the tension. You know, the, the shoot them up. Yeah, even the escape. I don't. I just. It just felt. Um, it just felt like flat. It was just. It had to. Ha- yeah. It just felt very flat. Yeah. Wow. I'm just. I, the sh- after four episodes, I get a very flat feeling from this. No, show. I, I, I totally get that. I, I totally get that. And like, I, and I'm not, and I'm like, again, not a star. So like, it's just, just seeing Boba Fett on screen does nothing right. for me. You have to establish what this means. Well, I was even for questioning me. why did he think to take the ship and go into the mouth of the thing? Like, what do you think the, is going to yeah, happen? That I, was supposed to be a jump scare. Everybody saw that coming. Like, what are you doing? What do you think is going to fucking happen? I don't understand happen? why he went to the Sarlacc pit. He, I, remember he, he climbed out with his fucking He must on. have been delirious or whatever because of the fumes or whatever the whatever the the Sarlacc was. His juices were on it. <laughs> I did gross. love, though, that she drops that sonic <laughs> charge bomb, and I think the thing is dead. And, all, and then his line is, next time, don't touch my buttons. That's what he says there. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. But fuck, uh, Ming-Na Wen, by the way, and Jennifer Beale are uh 58 and 59 respectively oh really jennifer beals is 59 they look amazing and uh they look oh, amazing. jesus both of them like she's kicking ass she, and i love the moment where she's like i'll come along for the ride that's cool what are you doing let me hang out can i hang out with you <laughs> like i like that there was a lot of good chemistry wow. between that. Yeah, i mean that, that stuff's fine i, I didn't have a problem and then the that. black croissant scene in the casino where he just she, He's looking at those Trandoshans and they just rubbing them the wrong way. <laughs> I got another issue yeah. with that one. He just rips the fucking dude's arm off. It's a lot no like blood. The, zero well, blood. Those, well, no those blood. aliens also regrow their limbs. I, I have an issue with that yeah. scene. Yeah. Too. Boba Fett comes in there. He's watching. He sees yeah. it and he's like, all right, I want you. I'm going to hire right? this guy. Yeah. But he needed to see that. <laughs> Didn't he already? He had black croissant. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't he offer him a job there? He let him go and just he let him go a reason. and then go back yeah. and then he goes, yeah. "Oh, you know what? You're badass because you ripped that guy's arm off. Now I want and then you on the team." But like, yeah. but don't yeah. don't they? Didn't we establish? Because I've watched some videos that he's worked with Black. They Croissant know before. each other and they haven't they haven't yeah. they haven't done the- so that that doesn't make any sense. I thought last episode when he lets him go that he was going to ask him to be a part of the team. It made more you sense asked then. Him right like, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I it just, was a weird scene. They just and then they just needed to see. But the way she de-escalate or tries to, it, it doesn't work. I love how she de-escalated it. Like when she was talking to him, like you're. What did she say? Like, she was like talking about you're how he was a badass. You don't have to do gladiator. this anymore. Everybody respects oh, yeah. you. Like she's like, I'll clear your debts. Just put them down. I know you got a big tab. It's all gone if you don't do this. <laughs> and he does it anyway. And she's like, I oh, was worth a shot, <laughs> basically. But man, <laughs> she looks great. I can't believe. The, those two look. This is a, a cast of you know older people and they look gilfs. Speak, <laughs> speaking of looking great, they still do. I mean, I did write this down. The droids still look pretty good, and the makeup and whatever they're doing with all the, the different aliens. alien races. Yeah. Was still Anthony really in this episode? Good. Did we see uh, him? Did we see he was. You were in the second episode. I don't think I've no, seen you again. I wasn't in that. No, I looked for myself. Yeah, I I that there. guy might have got fired from the casino for stealing or something. I don't know what happened. Nah, he'll be back. He'll be back. Well, that, that guy doesn't like uh, being on set because he's not even a Star Wars fan. So <laughs> they, they, they let him go. He's like, I was just doing They this. figured it out. Just needed a job. <laughs> yeah, you got the Max Rebo band is back. And yeah, so it ends with the War Council. He wants them to team up. They don't team up, but they won't bother him. And then... and then uh, They say no to him. Yeah, they're first like, why don't we just kill you? They have, Nobody respects they say him, no to him still. I know. So let's see. The team is it's Fennec Shan, the two Gamorrean guards, Black Croissants there. Yeah, Black Croissant the Mod Squad, the Mod Squad, which is like four of them, yeah, four or five. I think there's like six. maybe there's six. And, uh, and Mando, and and then she goes, "We can buy some muscle," and they play the Mandalorian music. I think fucking Din Djarin is coming back. So is I he coming wait. with Gibbler. with some Mandos? He, on, yeah, he could like bring a, like a like a fleet. He could bring those the so girl who, Mandos. Who would he bring? The the girls that were from Mandalorian, uh, the girls that uh, well, rugs liked from Clone Wars. Yeah, Bo Katan and them and her crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Do you think, do you think, so where does this, is this, this is after he gave away Grogu, right? So now he's yeah, like, no this is Grogu. present time. It'll be he's present got time the sword. He's got the black saber. He's got the oh, dark yeah. saber. Black That's saber. right. And no Grogu. Well, I hope, yeah. I hope the return of Mando spices this up a little bit. And are they going to give us a big cameo and a CGI thing? Somebody from the past that they got to use that. Who? I don't know. Oh, they don't need to do that. Just make, 
Just make the show a little more interesting. Yes, I, I, agree. I just find it a little. I find it a little flat. It's a slightly disappointing after the Mandalorian. Do you, do you guys think the show would be better if they would have just started with the flashbacks, done it in just chronological See, order? That is a great question, and maybe, maybe that's a that's a very definitive. I think answer, that it would have been more fun if he didn't kill Bib Fortuna in like two seconds, and you have a, a, a bad guy that everybody knows from the old movie. And they, it, it could have been like him wanting him going for the the throne this whole time, and you know wanting just to have a uh, you know, a big score, you know. But um, instead of this whole family thing, I wouldn't kinda... have been mad if it was half was flashback and then half was present and it was badass, you know. What are you talking about? That that's what they've been no, doing. No, but like not per episode, the whole season. Like five, the first four episodes are flashback, and then the remainder is all present. Oh, uh, uh, well, then you just chron- tell it in chronological. Yes, chronological. Yeah. yeah. And, okay, so Th- at that point, it's not a flashback. No, it's just the story. Yeah. Just tell me the story. Just the story. But did yeah. it add anything to hold these things back while we're getting bits and pieces of the present? I don't know. I don't know. It just adds like mystery. It just kind of stretches things out so you can have something to talk about. I, I think it's engineered I think prob- that way. I think the problem is I found the flashbacks generally to be a little bit more interesting than what was going on in the present. Yeah. So when you would, at least for me, I, when you would go to the present, I was like, well, he's just hanging around. He's just walking around the city without his helmet. That's not very <laughs> That's interesting. All he's ever doing. Whereas at least the flashbacks were like, you got yeah. some different things going on and you had the the Western kind of feel. Yeah. You got that first scene. I mean, the present, you had that horrible first scene with the laser shields where Ugh. they're running at like six miles, like four miles an hour after each other. <sighs> yeah. Then you have the the present also had that terrible car chase scene. Yeah, slowest fucking speeder where, where chase Where the cars were going ever. super slow. So, like, you, you got nothing going on good yeah, in the present. Except for Black I, uh, Croissant. I um, yeah. saw a little bit of Sin City was on cable. Oh, yeah. Robert Rodriguez yeah, yeah, did yeah. that movie. Yeah, yeah. And his direction in that movie was bad, too. And he's just so, following the fucking panels in the comic book. Like, how could you fuck that up? Jesus. Yeah. It was no, Robert just, Rodriguez was good. Uh, like, like in general. Yeah, I, I like I don't Desperado know. and I like and I like El Mariachi. Those are two fun ones. I don't know I think, if they should give him any more episodes, to be honest. Maybe. I feel like after he did Spy Kids and all those you know, kid movies. That I think that uh, taken the edge off of him. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, look, there's three episodes left of the Boba Fett. Let's quickly find out from our Jock and Nerd Nation Facebook three. group. Wow. Yeah, only three left. What our that's, that's a short season. Yeah, so. yeah it's almost over. Yeah. What our listeners thought. Joe St. John said easily the best episode so far. Bring on Mando for an hmm. all-out war. Also, Thundercat in Star Wars. Fuck yeah. See, he knew who Thundercat was. I did not. I was like, who's this fucking cat? Why isn't it the lion from Thundercats? No, <laughs> yeah, why is <laughs> No. It was the end of the sort of moment. Uh, Mustafa Meholi just quotes and cover up all that beautiful machinery. That's what Thundercat said when he said, cover her up. And he goes, yes, we live in a desert planet, idiot. Uh, <laughs> it's true. You're going to get all sorts of shit in there. You need to cover. Rick Martinez, I'm definitely going to have to watch it again. The techno music in the beginning completely took me out of the episode. Uh, it's different. David Zika, the opening Bantha barbecue scene felt like Disneyfication. See, there's another... And then he he sets it free. He's like, go, be free, make baby banthas. Which was funny, I guess. Uh, Zika also thought average episode, lots of setup, not much story movement. And then Jose Joel Cazares says, does anyone else feel like they should have set up the first season as before he meets Mando and the second season after he meets Mando? Personally, I'm not a fan of the jumping back and forth in time. I think this would have made the show easier to digest. Maybe that's the problem. I think if you really want to have people latch on to a, a story, it has to be you can't have this jumping back and forth and you don't know which one you're interested in more. You kind of yeah. tune out of the one that you're not interested in. It's weird. They both have to be equally interesting. Oh, and we get to what we're we watching. There's a show I'm going to recommend that does that really well, actually. But right now, let's take a break. We'll play some promos and come back and talk about a show that's fun at uh, making peace and things uh, right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Do you like superheroes? Do you like movies, television shows, and comic books? Do you like listening to a guy rant about these things for hours on end? Well, then you're in luck because you need to check out Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. 
Featuring me, Scott James Meridue, we'll be talking about a variety of geek and nerdy issues, joined each week by a rotating panel of guests that will try to contain me. Jokes on them, I cannot be contained. So please join us on Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape, where superheroes go to relax, but I never do. Cue the music! In a world of heroes, villains, six British actors will come together to play Pathfinder. It's sort of like D&D, but also really not like D&D. Join Falter. I immediately regret this decision. Caragor. Oh, I'll see you, Kenneth. Velda. I hold my arcane powers. Shania. Yes, I've cracked the case. M. No, I'll kill him. <laughs> and the Dungeon Master for an actual play podcast that takes adventure Seriously. Available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and from DangerClubPodcast.com. Danger Club, let's roll. God, doing that voice hurts. Dark and nerd. Listener, if you enjoy the show, support the show. We have a fan club. Just go on over to jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. Jock and Nerd! There's a link in the show notes. Everyone who supports us gets uh, bonus things like bonus content. There's an exclusive podcast feed just for our Patreon members over there. The shows come out early. There's instant reactions, post shows. We also do a monthly Discord hangout. Uh, just for our Patreon members, we just we had one last week. Anthony was there. Shout out to everybody who made it. Uh, yeah, uh, Delhauer was there. Dope Hope was there. Uh, it, I thought I thought initially you were going to shout me out. I'm like I'm part of the show. I you should, be, should there. be there. It's rare when you do make it. That's why it's <laughs> special. There was a good group of people there. It was fun. What you got? What did you guys think? I had fun. Yeah, it's a fun time good seeing everybody or not seeing everybody, but hearing from everyone. It's always a fun time. Uh, the next one for February will be Thursday, February 24th, 8 p.m. Central U.S. time. There's links in the show notes. Sign up for the Patreon. You see it right there. Discord benefits. Uh, get it done. Also, just so- sign up because you support us and you like what we're doing and we're an independent podcast and this helps fund the I show. I mean, we're giving you free shows for it's going to be seven years soon. You guys realize that. free shows every week for seven years. Uh, that's something to give back to. There's value. Sure. That's value right there. We're mm-hmm. not going anywhere. I don't know how this shit has been going on for almost seven years. It just fucking happens. Is it seven it's years? In March, wow. it's going to be seven years. Oh, my God. Right? Oh, shit. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> this is really lo- a, this is really a long show. <laughs> Let's wow. get to the other review of the superhero television Peacemaker on HBO Max. Uh, also, we're on the fourth episode. It's lined up. The cycles have lined up with Boba Fett. Same episode numbers. This one is called The Chode Less Traveled. Hilarious title. Here's your spoiler alert. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. This whole show written and directed by James Gunn. You're getting 100% gun every Thursday. Anthony, what happens in The Chode Less Traveled? I think about this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so at the end Rewind. of the last episode, he uh, he finds out what a butterfly is. And we see a butterfly, alien butterfly. Yes, we got to see a butterfly, and because of that, now he's feel we found out the secret what the butterflies are. It's real butterflies, but he's got to basically he finds out that his dad has been framed for a lot of his stuff. So he's dealing with daddy issues, and he's got a talk to his dad and potentially get him out. And the rest of the team is basically against this because this could really screw up the mission. So they're trying to talk him out of seeing his dad. Also, the team has now recruited Vigilante because Vigilante just keeps showing up. (laughs) He knows too much now at this point. He knows too much. He's got to show up and he's missing his pinky toe. So he's limping (laughs) around without a pinky toe. So yeah, the whole episode is kind of this... um, there's not really a mission in no, this just episode. It's more out. or less just, yeah, it's more of a hangout and them just, everyone's just kind of trying to stop everyone from fucking shit up, even though they continue to just keep fucking shit up. But we learn more about Peacemaker's origin and why he kind of is the way he is and why his dad maybe hates him so much. 
and a lot of the trauma that's happened in in Peacemaker. You get life. a lot of great character development in this episode. Uh, I thought there's some killer lines in the dialogue. There's some fucked up lines. Like some of the there's great dialogue, even though like nothing happens. There's a fight scene. Uh, Judo Master. Meanwhile, they have him strapped to the sofa, uh, and he gets out, and then they get him back. He's not dead. Still not dead. Somehow, I thought he was dead. He wasn't dead. Uh, but uh, I I don't know. I kind of like this episode for all the character stuff that happened. Rugs, what'd you think of this episode? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the show. It's it wasn't the most action packed episode, but it definitely had some great parts. I like when Vigilante goes to prison. That's fun. Oh, my God. That is an amazing scene. Uh, what's his name? Freddy Stroma. He's probably like the ever. It's going to be everybody's favorite character in the show. Like he's even more entertaining than John Cena at times. Who's really good in this. Hey, what do you think about uh, Vigilante, Anthony? My friend Ed. Shout out yeah. to Ed. Uh, compared him to a better version of Deadpool. Oh, oh my God. He's very Deadpool. Yes. deadpool but also like a dweeb <laughs> and 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 more sadistic so you got this like weird combination of a guy that wants to do good but enjoys killing people but isn't racist but also is a nerd and like no one would ever want to hang out with that guy if he didn't have his mask he's on. so bad at keeping his secret identity also which i think is hilarious <laughs> he changes his voice when he when they notice that he he's out without he's his like, mask why are you limping? unrelated skiing accident to vigilante <laughs> has nothing to do with it. but wow when she so out of bio is i love how she's like trying to Tell Chris his dad is not good for him. He's like, you are a good person. Your dad is just a bad, bad person. She's really like genuinely concerned. It's so sincere. And she kind of. Do you of, think she's projecting in her, like, in her feelings about her mom? That's how they can relate. They both have these overbearing parents that are pushing him to be something they don't want to be. Or that they're not. See, I think there's a twist coming oh. here. Oh. I think it's almost too queued up where she and are lighting Peacemaker up. are the same. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that's really fascinating. But she unintentionally. Right, tells vigilante to kill. No, she she meant to do him. that, right? She meant to do it. That's actually one of my favorite scenes is when they cut to Mern and he's going. Every time I turn around, <laughs> one of you doing some, one of you guys is doing something <laughs> fucked up. He's like, Waller gave me soldiers. I thought Waller gave me soldiers, and said I got the fucking apple <laughs> the dumpling apple gang. Dumpling gang is great. I like that, that whole that, even the prior where she's like, Adebayo's telling Harcourt that she had uh, convinced vigilante to kill her uh peacemaker's dad she's like hold up wait a minute what <laughs> like the, the fact that they just keep fucking up and i know it's like not at all realistic because if you're supposed to have this this a team no pun intended watching out for the superhero and everyone is just a bumbling idiot but it, it just works yeah we talked about maybe that it was by design that this this uh group sucks but mm. it's still like really really bad <laughs> the super <laughs> inept but uh, I think that's what makes it funny. I don't know. So that whole sequence from when Chris goes to see his dad first to when Vigilante gets in prison. Uh, first of all, his dad is so Robert Patrick is so great. The some of the shit he says to he's, him, such an asshole. He like, goes, "I saw you come out of your mother's cooch. I should have slit your throat then and there." I was like, "Oh my <laughs> wow, really?" Well, and he's just like, "Oh, dad." Uh, oh, that that <laughs> scene where he's. He goes, well, maybe I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> He's like, what? And then, and and, yeah, and Robert Patrick's like, you compare you compare yourself yes. to a chode right now. <laughs> because you compare yourself <laughs> to a chode, a little dick. Maybe I'm a oh. grower, not and a he tells him What? He tells him he loved his brother, not him. And we find out a little bit about uh, what happened when his brother died mysteriously. And he was involved. Uh, but then he has another great line where after he tells him everything, Augie Smith is like, I'm no rat, but the first chance I get, I'm spilling everything. And he's like, well, Dad, technically, that's you. That makes, makes you rat. a rat. <laughs> and then when Vigilante goes, and he goes, and he just sits down, he goes, why don't we tell him something we're all grateful for? Like, how about black people's contribution to American culture? I'll tell you, I'm grateful. <laughs> he's like, if it wasn't for black people's music, redneck music would sound like the wet, sloppy sounds of fucking your sister. It's like what the fuck? Oh, shit. And he and he just takes him out. The that whole scene was so good. It was amazing. I I, I did enjoy that. I, I mean, there there's there wasn't even though there wasn't a ton. We do get some reveals. Obviously, the reveal at the end. But the one where Judo Master and Peacemaker get a, a rematch, and Peacemaker, you know, it's like Western yeah. style where the 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 bag rolls across the, 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 par, par, 
the parking Great. lot. And then, but you you realize in that scene that maybe there's something more to this. And this is where, you know, there's always something more to Waller's missions. And you, you hear from Judo Master before he gets yeah. shot that the butterflies aren't what we think they are. Gonna there's something going something. on. Something. And that's yeah. the time fucking Adebayo chooses to actually shoot a motherfucker. And she's like, I never shot anyone. And but he's still not dead. Like he's still alive. How is he alive? That's strange. I don't know. He got shot in yeah. the chest. And he's like, oh, they move their kidneys around. Ninjas and, and then they ninjas yeah. can do that. Well, they yeah, <laughs> they, which is like yeah. not possible. That's with. But the, the the next scene where you see Judo Master, he's just on the yeah. couch with like a bandage bandage around his chest and getting yeah, an IV. An IV. It's he's just like, getting fluids. How is it? I'm like, how the fuck? No, but it's just like, how, how is this curing him? It, oh, it's not helping him at all. I don't know. It's got Robitussin in there. <laughs> <laughs> just electrolytes i don't know how uh he's alive uh i also loved what uh well we find out that portal is a quantum unfolding storage area which leads to a you dimensional mean, uh, nodule where all the weapons are the room, yeah yeah the room and where you the see the fucking are. white dragon suit which is great and then vigilante's hole if it walks like a duck that whole conversation that's kind of fun where uh, Chris is like, how the fuck is that even possible? A duck in a human costume? The sizes are incompatible. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Oh, and then he does call Batman a pussy, and he has the conversation we've all had, right? Like, why right. does Batman just keep putting fuckers in Arkham when they get out, and he's got to go get them again? What, just just fucking, kill him. Just kill him the first time. That was great. That old man is hilarious. No, I mean, the, the whole episode, again, it's just another... I mean, it wasn't like... Something. This wasn't probably the best episode out of the four that I've seen. Is it four yeah, it's now? Yeah, and this one too. Yeah, yeah. but I, I did enjoy it. And then you get the reveal at the end with Mern's Mern a fucking being a butterfly. butterfly. Shit. I didn't. Uh, which, which now you're sense. like, no, I don't know if it makes sense. You, you, you still got. There's a lot more mystery there because Mern is on a mission to kill right. butterflies, yet he is also a it's butterfly. A so there's, butterfly, there's something going yeah. on. I. I really, I actually really like Mern. I like his character a lot. I think he's funny. He's as hell. very interesting. Just sits there, that fucking stare. Just, how, just how pissed off. Whenever they yeah. cut to him and he's just, just pissed yelling. off at the team, I, I just yeah. crack up every time. Uh, the, uh, I think it's interesting that he told them that he killed the butterfly, but he didn't, and he, he's hanging out with it. He gets it stoned. He's smoking weed. Yeah, it even <laughs> comes over and consoles him at the end, like it rolls over when Eagle comes over. Yeah. He's got Eagly and, and the like, Butterfly. Because, oh, I mean, at that moment, it's crazy. Again, more dancing Rick, uh, John Cena. But he he's bad about killing Rick Flag. He, they show him. His father trained him. He had to kill a dude when he was younger. And yeah, then you see his driver. brother collapsing, foaming at the mouth. What happened there? Uh, Rabies? Yeah, what the fuck? Did he push him? Did he poison him? Like, what the shit is happening? Remember in uh, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah when King Ghidorah wraps his neck oh, yeah. around Godzilla? Godzilla foams at the mouth. A little bit. That's what that reminded me of. What if it's Pop Rocks? Oh, it was really Pop Rocks. And he drank yeah, soda. He choked on the fucking fizzy. Oh, that was always a, a you ever do that? No, myth, it'll right? go crazy. I call, drank- if I call it, I win, I win no, the internet. Okay. You ever tried that? That shit hurts your <laughs> mouth, dude. It fucking stings. Those fucking Pop Doesn't Rocks. It? I've never tried they'll, it. They'll fucking sting you. Have you ever tried sneezing with your eyes open? You can't do it. It's, it's impossible. impossible. I know, but your, your eyes open. Only Eminem can do it. He says so in a lyric. He's like, I'm so bad. Mm-hmm. I sneeze with the motherfucking eyes open. Or something. It's like one of his lines. Yeah. I, Is that how that line goes? I'm just saying, Eminem's <laughs> the only one I've heard Clem can sneeze with their eyes open. I believe him. It's Eminem. Uh, Again, okay, the music's great. The show is great. This one has, I think, four episodes left. Yeah. Four? So. I mean, it's it's definitely one of those shows where you got to be really in tune with what this kind of style of comedy, because that scene where they're talking about ducks and humans and not not at all being compatible, that, that that's there's nothing really right. you learn in that scene. Like there's it's just them sitting around discussing something that means means nothing like there's nothing they're They're discussing something that in the, at the end of the day is, is pointless to discuss, but. If you're really into, if you really like that kind of stuff, and you enjoy like these little side conversations, which happen all the time throughout the show, then I think you'll really like the show. And so far, it's all hit for me for the most part. Yeah, the tone, I you know, I felt some of the early, some of the stuff was dragging on a little when they did the random conversations, but I really enjoyed a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the lines in this one. Can you imagine though the show? I don't know how strict DC is, and I don't really know what their entire overarching goals are. 
but like this show exists in the same supposedly exists in the same universe as Ben Affleck, Batfleck. See, Batman. I think I think they maybe he's doing his own little pocket universe. This exists in this the movie The Suicide Squad universe and this universe. Does that movie exist? Yeah, well, the, if, but if the Suicide hmm. Squad universe, it, it, if it occurred in the Suicide Squad universe, Rick Flag and Harley Quinn are both from the original that, Suicide that's, Squad, that's which has true. Batman in it. I mean, so was Waller. And Waller crosses over. And Waller. And Waller's see, the I same Waller. I can see Birds yeah. of Prey yeah. also being in this universe, like those the, that kind of uh, genre. I don't know. I don't know. It just it doesn't. It's not compatible. I mean, it, it's, well, I don't think it's look, most they, meant to think about. They came from a world with a giant starfish. So I think everything everything's <laughs> at play. True. Fucking fucking shark that's walking around and with Sylvester Stallone's voice coming out of it. Bird. You know. Hey, yeah, it's bird. all right. It's fine. Everyone liked the episode. Rugs. I thought I, it, I, wrong, I thought it was fine. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoy the show. I'm trying to like see where it's going. I'm trying to like in my head like go where the fuck is this going? What, what how's this going to play out? So. The dad's gonna be the bad guy, obviously. Is he gonna get in that? Is costume. he gonna get in the suit? Is he getting a suit? Oh man, the suit, suit is crazy. It looks like the comics. There's gonna be like what, like a showdown between his dad and, or is his dad end up gonna be the hero because he's gonna be the one can stop the butterflies? What's the deal with the butterflies, though? I don't know. I don't know what the butterflies are about. What do you think that they're about? Alien? I don't know. Alien invasion? I uh, I, don't, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> I I do like that the mystery deepens. And there was another great line when <laughs> he tells Amelia Harcourt because your tits look stellar in that shirt. That's a compliment. It's not in a sexist way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's fucking fantastic. She's fucking warming like, up to him though. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. She tells him. She over under on her actually I think banging by the, end of it. the peacemaker. Mm. By the end like, of it, over under what? One time, yeah, but they're gonna they're gonna at least hook up. They're gonna have to, yeah. I would o- say. Over under zero, they yeah one. They're gonna hook up. <laughs> yeah, they have to. They're gonna they have to bang, and then they're never gonna do it again. It's gonna be a it's huge mistake. Be awkward for both of them afterwards. Yeah, maybe. You think James Gunn? Wow, well, this is too much. I'm gonna ask. You think James Gunn would show his wife's tits on screen? Oh snap! That is a great question. Oh my! Every god. girl he's oh, banged. Shit. Oh my god! They've shown their tits. Really. Yeah, what are you talking about? Really? Have you not been watching the oh, show? On the There's show. Been two I women. thought you meant yeah. every girl James Gunn is banged. Oh, no, 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 no. So, on the show, know, yes. maybe. Well, I hope he gets to see their tits. When I, they you know what? I don't think, they, I don't think they're going to do I don't think they show her tits because this is what, yeah, his wife. This is his wife. He's not going to do that. He'll make, I think he'll make it like, you know, sexy enough, but they're just going to stop it. Oh, also, Adebayo finds this card for, what is that? It's like a Thai restaurant. Do you think we're going to see Adebayo's tits? Oh, no. God. Why not? You see what? <laughs> you see that episode of Why the, we're just talking why about the Last Beam's Man? Tits. They had all sorts so, of sizes uh, of tits. And I mean, yeah, just, we saw all kinds you of You saw Adebayo's tits. woman's, or Adebayo's wife's we saw yeah. her uh, crotch. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to see anyone's tits. I'm just trying to make be funny. But like, so something yeah. about the card connects the senator and the one butterfly that he killed. What the card? girl? She finds a card when she calls Mern. She's like, I got a lead, and it's it's like the Golden Tie Restaurant or something. And then, oh, that's right. It yeah. connects the senator butterfly to the other girl butterfly that attacked him. But then that's when we oh, find that girl was a butterfly too, huh? Yeah. Do you think we're gonna see John Economos's tits? I hope so. so that's, sugar that's tits. Show me some sugar tits. I like uh, John, John Economos, that line where he goes, great reference. And he and he's like, but in the end, the Apple, like he's referring to Apple Dumbling Land, they always win at the end. And Myrne's just like, fuck you, John. <laughs> <laughs> and then John later is like, uh, he's what is he saying? He's talking about how, uh, or, or he's like, I thought uh, we need to clarify basically that. Uh, oh, Eagly is his best Adebayo friend. Yeah. Had confirmed. Adebayo wasn't talking about eagerly. He was talking about vigilante. She was talking about vigilante when she convinced G- vigilante to kill Peacemaker's father. And uh, Economos is like, well, we have to clarify for Harcourt. <laughs> yes. Harcourt would have, fi- Harcourt would have like fallen for it. She goes, like, Fuck you, you really think she really, she's like, you really think that I would have been like, would have like fallen for the fact that Adebayo convinced eagerly to kill John's father. <laughs> Fuck you, John. <laughs> He's like, why is everybody fucking me today? <laughs> Oh, he's great. They all like hate. I mean, it is fun. They all hate each other. 
They all have a good dynamic. I also love how Adebayo has to constantly hear about what people think about her mother, and they don't know that's yeah, that's that, a, that's his, her, her mom. And I'm like, damn, man, like you really find out what what, what people I, I think. I think there's a turn there. I think we we we're being set up to think Adebayo is this innocent girl, and I think she's gonna be oh, just snap. like Waller. Really? Yeah, I don't know. It just it's just it's too uh, it's too clean. It's too clean the 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 analogy or the the parallel between her and Chris and is Tina. trying to not. Well, be I think I think that they 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 want to keep her to be the the likable character of the show. Mm. They want you to fall in love with her, but I don't know. Maybe they'll switch it up. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that she's would be really great. I love her character. Now, which one of these uh, of them is Don Knotts from the Apple Dumpling? <laughs> Don Gang? Knotts was in the Apple Dumpling Gang. <laughs> Oh my god! This yeah. is like black and white, isn't it? I don't know. No, no, it's like a Disney thing oh, was, with uh, whatever that Tim, Tim, whatever is in, oh, in it's that. Nineteen seventy-five. I, I did know that Don Knotts. Tim was in Conway the and Don Knotts. Yeah, Tim Conway. How much does and Bill Bixby, the Hulk, was in it? Yeah, yeah the Hulk is in. <laughs> I, just, I, I just love the delivery on Mern's lines when he's pissed off at these guys. So they get the fucking apple dumb again. <laughs> <laughs> there are a bunch of fuck ups and uh, yeah I love when Myron gets mad uh, no it's a fun show I can't wait to see again episode 8 should be something crazy because he didn't let it out for the, the credits oh, so it's 8 total it's four 8 episodes total yeah it. so there's right, 3 of Boba Fett left and 4 of this so they're kind of in around the same week Wow, uh, one week off let's see who <laughs> sticks their landing that, that's better. when you know Ruggs is running on fumes when his response is to, to something that just a fact. He just goes, wow. wow. All right, fuckers. <laughs> hey, let's do some news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. Got a couple of things here from our listeners in the Jock and Nerd Facebook group, Jock and Nerd Nation. Hmm. Kevin Seidel posted a photo of what? Of the first released image of Leslie Grace as Batgirl Geek for the HBO Max Batgirl movie. He says, oh, my God, it looks like the uniform from Adam West's Batman updated for the times. I'm kind of I'm kind <laughs> of into it. Uh, it's not. It does. It's not bad. It does. It does remind me of the Adam West Becker updated for the or, times. Oh, I don't what know. Just mean? a little, you know, I don't know. Made more realistic looking. Uh, what do you guys think? Oh, you mean it's not sequined? It's not just flat latex. Show you the, yeah. the woman's uh, form. Yeah, I mean that no. Batgirl in the Adam West show. She was uh, <laughs> she was sexy. I remember her when I was little. She oh, gave yeah. me a little little chode boner. Did I use that That's right? That's right. That you? Geek boner. Yeah, this isn't giving anybody any boners, but it looks cool. It looks tactical. It's uh, blue and yellow. Anthony, what do you think? Didn't we talk about this or no? We did not. You didn't? We might have talked about it like on the thing. We might, we, oh. Yes, on the Discord. I'm confused when we, yeah. or maybe I talked about it with some of my friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very... Uh, CWS. It looks very TV. This is kind of a made-for-TV movie they're making, technically. But uh, I would hope they would make it a little. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll wait till we see it in, in live action. But I was hoping that it would be a little more uh, like big budgety. I just, yeah, it does. It feels very CW. So the other thing that came out that I also thought was interesting is in Glasgow from the set of this, their photos have come out of this mural, right? And in this mural, it's like. Uh, it's a tattered, worn mural, but you clearly see Batman standing there, and this is a, presumably Michael Keaton's Batman since he is in the movie as Batman. But next to him, what do you see? A fucking Robin. Oh, shit. Michael Keaton never had a Robin. What Robin is this? You guys see that? What do you think is this? This is a mural in the universe of this movie. Well, technically... Michael Keaton's Batman is the other Batman's is the is is Val Kilmer and George and who had the Robin George Clooney sure. yes they had that Robin although Rob, he didn't dress like that no this what, is like comic book Robin what the, what was the name of that actor that played Chris that O'Connell Robin? is also Chris a lot older it wasn't O'Donnell. like O'Donnell O'Donnell the Chris O'Connell's that other one Chris O'Connell's the host from MTV Chris, right uh, no Chris O'Connell was he's the actor from Jerry Maguire. That's Jerry O'Connell. That's Jerry Jer- O'Connell. Oh, shit. Was that the host of MTV? No, Chris O'Connell was the host <laughs> in like MTV stuff. 
Sure. What about the girl from Requiem for a Dream? That's Jennifer Connelly. That's Jennifer, Jennifer Connelly. Connelly. Chris yeah. O'Donnell played Robin. And yeah, he wasn't a young boy, Robin, right? It kind of it made a little more sense no, yeah. that he was an older person. But this looks like a young boy, Robin, with this Batman in this universe. This is odd. Yeah, young boy, I don't know. Robin. I don't know what they're doing here. And, he, and for whatever reason... I guess the way they drew it, but that Robin has a gigantic dome compared to that Batman. He's got a pretty big head. I just, yeah. uh, I mean, I re- he's in the I mean, foreground. He, so that's I guess. true. He's in the foreground. Yeah, he is in front he, of I mean, him. he's he's like so. Batman's probably what six feet tall, six sure, two. With the lifts, he got to put on Michael. And, and this Robin, <laughs> although being in the foreground, he's probably like four eleven. He's, yeah, he's, it's a <laughs> and kid. he's got a gigantic dome. It's a kid with a big head. Someone's got, you got to look at this picture. For everyone who's listening, look at the picture and look look at the proportions of these. It'll two be people. in the podcast show uh, podcast image right now. Why did they make Robin four foot five? I don't know. And are we going to see this Robin? Is he dead? Is he? Uh, is it? Uh, he will be played by Judo Master. Is it the guy who plays <laughs> Judo Master? Is play? He's two feet tall. Uh, again, Brendan <laughs> Fraser is in got this as Firefly. Leslie Grace as Barbara Gordon. J.K. Simmons, Commissioner Gordon. Uh, it'll be interesting. See it on the on the HBO Max. The other thing uh, I got from Jess Rivera, who asked Geek Boner, Geek Boner, Floppy Jock, Floppy Jock, on the show from Netflix called Murderville. They just put out a trailer, actually. Um, if you guys want to watch it, basically, the gist of the show. It stars Will Arnett. It is a detective show where uh, it's scripted, right? But every episode they have a celebrity guest star. Kumail and Johnny is one of them. Geek so I already love the show. Uh, but they have a guest celebrity come on. Here's the catch. The celebrity does not get the script for the episode of the show that they're on. So everyone else has a script and they have to make their way through. And if you watch the tra- mm. if you watch the trailer, I love when improv is done well. And if you have good uh, people doing it and they seem to have a couple of good, they got Ken Jong, Sharon Stone is one guest star. If you could do it well. It's hilarious. But you see them cracking up in the show and it's shot like. A typical, you know, like three camera, multi camera sitcom or TV show. Only they're cracking up at these ridiculous things. The trailer's kind of funny. Do what do you guys think of this idea? Is this uh, give me? I don't know. I gotta, I gotta check this out. Okay, do you want to watch the trailer? We can all watch the trailer. Yeah, let's watch the trailer okay. first, and then we'll pause right here. Let's watch the trailer, and then we'll give it a thought. Talking nerd. All right, what did you guys think? Intrigued? Will this work? I will skip this immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it it has a risk of hit or miss, like it not being good. So I have, I had the opposite reaction. I, I I wouldn't say I loved it, but I was slightly intrigued. And what got me the most was the fact that they have Marshawn Lynch on. That's a football who, guy, I, isn't it? Yeah, I was gonna say you both probably. I don't know if you know you know who that is, but he's. I thought that was T Pain. <laughs> definitely not T Pain. That's that's racist. No, it's good. Uh, and he yeah, he's a football player and he's hilarious and. I've never seen him really act in too many things, yeah. but the the line right away where he goes, "What kind of shit is this?" <laughs> when they throw pull out the doll for as the murder weapon, I think it could be fun. I mean, I think Netflix is 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 definitely a, a place where people try things. Like you can do whatever you want on Netflix. It's a good experiment. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. yeah, and they're gonna and they're gonna try with something that I don't know if I've I've really seen before. You know, they tried with Bandersnatch. That was kind of experimental, and that was fun. But this is they're combining. It's almost like a game show too. At the end, the the celebrities presented three suspects. They got to actually guess, figure out who it is. It's like a game show meets improv meets half scripted uh, detective comedy. Like what the fuck? Uh, I think Kumail's gonna kill it. I think that episode's <laughs> course, probably gonna be the best. I will check <laughs> it out. That's gonna be the best episode. The, you know, of la- all time. trailer wise, the first half of the trailer really is not that funny, and it doesn't get funny until Conan Conan shows up and they do that name gag. So Conan, I think, will also do well. Well, I like. I mean, even the scene where they just throw like Sharon Stone's there and they just make her start speaking ger- like oh, yes, in a German, German accent. accent. Yes. So it's it'll be interesting to see what they throw at these people. I don't know if I, again I don't know if I'll watch every episode, but it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. It's a crazy I concept. I, I love. I, I'm, and just the 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 variety of people. Yeah, like he's you have thrown a fucking football guy into this madness. Like well, then you have like you, then you have Sharon Stone. Yes. You know, you have Ken Ken, uh, Ken Jong. I was about to say Kim Jong. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's uh, in Ken this. Jong, that would be a great. And episode. like Camille and uh, what's her fucking what's the fucking uh, Conan? Like these are all guys that are, are kind of used to thinking on their feet yeah. like that. But like Sharon Stone, I wouldn't imagine can do that. 
but you know we'll see. And then this, Marshawn Lynch show. is probably just going to act like himself throughout the whole thing. Yeah, like, what absolutely. What's going on here? This is who's the one woman at the end? Uh, the, the one woman that I, I didn't. I name. didn't know who that was. I think that that that's also T Pain. <laughs> oh. No, so I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Annie Murphy. Annie Murphy is the girl. Yeah. What is she in? Uh, what is Annie Murphy in? That's a good question. I don't know her from anything. Rugs, do you know Annie Murphy? No, I know Eddie Murphy. She's Canadian. Uh, when I looked at her at first, I was like, is that Emma Stone? That's she was in Shit's Creek. Uh, okay. in the Russian Doll. She was in Russian Doll. Mm. A lot of TV. A lot of TV shows. Mm. Well. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll watch it. If Imran, if you remind me that it's on, I might throw it on. Okay. No, I think it's, uh, I don't know when it's coming out. It's a fantastic fucking concept uh, to try. And Netflix is the best play. Oh, February 3rd. Oh, it's coming out soon. Only on Netflix. Hmm. All right. Let's end with some what are we watching? Anthony, are you watching anything? I've been listening to podcasts. Been listening a little bit of binge mode. Okay. Catching the last... What I listened to the Avengers recap they did of part one and two, and then I'm now listening to their season finale of Binge Mode. Uh, along with that, I did watch uh, the Rewatchables. I watched the Rewatchables Halloween. So that was fun. It's a podcast, too. And what else? That's all uh, the Ringer Network The stuff? Ringer, yeah, yeah, the Ringer. They got a the lot Ringer. of good shows over there. They They're, do have a lot of good shows. And are they only on Spotify, I believe? I think it might only no, be on no, Spotify. No, they're on all the podcast networks, but then they release ex- some exclusive stuff just on for Spotify. Spotify. Spotify owns them now. Oh. Uh, but they have like 30 podcasts. Yeah, they got a ton of shit. And I watched the UFC this past weekend. Whoa. How was that? Entertaining? I had a good time. I had a good time watching UFC. I watched it by myself. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. Uh, Rugs, what do you got? I haven't watched that much, actually. I haven't watched it. I mean, I've been watching YouTube. Yeah, he gets stuff. in the YouTube rabbit hole. Uh, I got to. All right. I'm just going to talk about my this fucking show. It's my latest binge obsession. Uh, all 10 episodes are out and I watched the first one. And I had to watch all of them. It's called Yellow Jackets on Showtime. I don't know if people are talking about this. I need to find someone who has watched this. It's definitely a show that makes you want to talk about it. Here's the premise. It's 10 episodes all on Showtime. Uh, It basically tells the story of this high school soccer team uh, flying on their way to nationals in a private jet, and the jet crashes in the mountains. They are stranded. And you find out, like, in the first episode, they ended up being stranded for, like, 19 months, a year and a half, right? Here's the thing, though, how they tell the story. Half of it, that happened in the 90s. So you get great 90s music, great teenage drama. It's actually well done. Half of it is that story, and the other half of it is present time. Girls who survived in adulthood, what they're going on, uh, what's going on with them, and there's a mystery there. And we were just talking about how Boba Fett, one thing is not as interesting as the other. This fucking show, both sides of the story are fascinating, and how they slowly reveal the details. They slow roll, you know, they're being stranded in the wilderness. Uh, It has... The twists and turns are fantastic. There's even hints of like supernatural shit. It makes you, it, there's a, it, it's got a David Lynch vibe at times. Two of the standouts playing the adult survivors, Juliet Lewis, uh, Christina Ricci, both in the show. They're both really good, but like the whole cast is good. The young versions of them are good. Uh, and the way they've set it up is they could easily have five, six, seven seasons of this. Uh, and it'd be fucking compelling. It's it's really good. I need to talk to someone who's seen fucking Yellow Jackets. I don't, I don't even know. I what have that is. not watched it. I have not watched it. Have you guys heard anybody? Have you no. heard about this? No. It's 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 uh. It was. I got obsessed. I it sucked me in right away. And I couldn't stop watching. So it's one of those shows. I watched the first episode of Ozark. Oh, season the, the last season. I think that's the last season. Yeah, it starts out with a kind of a misdirect, and um, yeah, I'm like already hooked on to it again. I'm like, oh shit! But I I did need the um the uh, the flashback preview that where they, where they kind of catch you up again, you know? Yes, you need that with these shows that come out once a year every season. It's hard to yeah, remember. I forget everything that I watch. But uh, yeah, so I think that this season is going to be good. I think they they should stop after this season though. 
Mm. Like the great thing about Breaking Bad is it ended. It had an end. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of these shows they have an end point. Like I listened to a thing about the Yellow Jackets people. They said we know where it's going to end. Same thing with Cobra Kai. They have an end point. It's just that how long you going to milk it before you take us there? You gotta have you gotta have an idea of how to close the story out. You can't wait to see. Oh, let's see if we can squeeze another season out of it. Because do you want to be remembered as the show that like just kept going on? It just it sucks. Wait you, till you Stranger know. Things comes back. That hasn't had a season in like a year, two years almost. I think was the last fucking season. I don't remember what was happening. Yeah, they should stop with that. And these kids too. are probably way too old now. Have you guys heard of the show You on Netflix? Yeah, I heard uh, a lot of people talk about that one, too. Yeah, one of my friends brought that show up, and they were watching it at my place, and I like kind of watched a little. Yeah. And I was a little bit intrigued. I guess it's about the psychopath that captures people he's obsessed with and like puts them in a glass box. Yeah, yeah. It's got three seasons, and oh, then like, Jesus. one of the people... Spoiler alert, I guess. I don't really know if I am spoiling something because I don't really fucking watch the show. There you go. Is one of the people he captures then like gets in on the crime with him and now is like his accomplice. I heard that's a crazy show. Yeah, I've heard uh, that's a crazy show. Dead I might to watch me, that. Dead to Me is also great with Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini. There's two seasons of that. Yellow well, Jackets. Anything with Christina Applegate. Yeah, that's a great show. It reminded me a lot of Yellow Yellow Jackets, the fiction. But that is that show you is this is the Netflix effect. Apparently, it originally premiered on Lifetime. Nobody gave a fuck. Nobody watched it. It gets put on Netflix, gets a new life, and now it has huge fans. And this has happened to that show Lucifer. Like, mm. Lucifer was the most streamed show of the year. You know the- what else it happened to? Yeah. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Seinfeld. More people are talking about Seinfeld now all of a sudden because it's on Netflix all over the world. Uh, fucking Daredevil is trending again. Because of Matt Murdock and like the show keeps popping up. It's like number one trending. You brought up something though that I want to really touch on real quick. I didn't know Lifetime still existed. Lifetime's still a thing. And and better question, where can I stream Lifetime movies? Uh, well, <laughs> you, you, Lifetime movies and then there's Hallmark movies, which are kind of similar but different. But they Hallmark also- movies are a little more uh, like front, like you're like. You feel the squeaky good at the clean. End. Yeah, yeah. Lifetime yeah. movies are like a little dramatic. You, but you know, do you know what a big women. fucking industry the Hallmark Christmas movie market is? Like those people, they're making a lot of money. Oh, they, I know. They know their market and they give their audience exactly what they want over and over again and they well, eat it I'm up. as clueless about those movies as I am clueless about sports. Yeah. I mean, I, I would sometimes when I visit my mom, she's got the Hallmark channel on and I'm going, oh my God. Here's a How couple, can you watch these dude, movies? They, that's the thing. They give their audience exactly what they want. But and I think, I think the, the, the target demo for Lifetime and Hallmark is yeah. you got to be at least 43 years old <laughs> and a woman. Here's some Lifetime movie titles here, all right? Sinister Switch. What do you think that's about? Infidelity in Suburbia. Uh, mm. here's, here's a great one. Nanny Seduction. You have The Perfect Marriage. <laughs> Frame for Murder. To Have and To Hold. Uh, this is just great. And then uh yeah what would what do you think the antithesis was to lifetime was it like spike tv oh my god they have so many of these movies that are all the same <laughs> but what, what do you think what do you think is spike tv like i feel like spike tv was like the man channel for a bit now that doesn't exist i tried to be the man channel yeah. but yeah but they had shitty man stuff yeah there is no man channel. But lifetime is like so a feminist would argue all the channels are man channels um i, I feel like <laughs> lifetime's had legs Dude, if you just pull up the title posters of all the Lifetime movies, they're all kind of the same thing. No, there's just 100%. like one big woman head and then she's in danger or there's a romance. These titles, Deadly Garage Sale, Prisoner of Love. <laughs> Speaking of channels that used to exist and tried to come back, did you hear about this whole G4 thing? Oh, it's coming back? G4 is coming back? Yay. No, G4 is back. Really? It is? Yes. Why? But it's not the G4 that you remember or I remember. Um, it's, uh, so I, they wanted to make a YouTube channel and then they also wanted to take whatever they make on YouTube and put it on cable TV as like blocks. Mm. So they'll stream and they'll take that block and they'll put it on cable. So they're YouTube streaming and they've basically got rid of all of like, what G4 used to be was like, you had like one or two guys that knew about <laughs> the gaming and then, and you ju- then you just had like eye candy like coming in and just, you know, reading scripts. 
of like you know whatever like they, 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 like Olivia Munn Olivia never really Munn. had an opinion right. on anything. She just looked great and she was up for anything, and she was basically there to be eye candy for like a bunch of horny dudes who play video games and never go outside. Um, so that worked. It seemed to work for like a while, and they were bringing back G four, and um, they decided, oh well, we're going to be progressive and we're going to you know be inclusive and we're going to. Uh, represent all of the gaming community and which is fine with me. I was like, cool, do that, whatever. I'm, I'm here, but it wasn't fun mm-hmm. at all. Like I felt like it wasn't fun and it wasn't like the, the, the kind of comedy that they had was, was there. And then one of the hosts, I guess, got flack for being wrong about a couple of things. And of course, like you're getting flamed on a chat. You know, if you have a chat running while you're streaming, oh, yeah, that's, that's the there's worst. all kinds of assholes are going to go on. There. Just go on Twitter. There's like assholes for days and uh, started insulting this uh, this person's appearance. I can't say I don't know. I don't know how they identify. So I'm just going to say uh, insulting their appearance. And they went off and and said that, like you know, basically were like, all you gamer g- g- dudes are all like blah blah blah, and if you don't like what I say, it's because you have um, a problem with with me, and because of who I am, and not because of what I'm saying. And if you don't like it, just don't watch. So everybody just stopped watching it, and they lost like a bunch of people. Um, I don't know if they've grown, if it's bounced back or whatever, but it's been all over Twitter. Um, this whole controversy, the speech that was made. And I thought the speech was actually, you know, it made a lot of sense, but I don't think it was the, I don't think that's the place to do it when you're just trying to launch a channel to just, just rip on every gamer guy that might be watching. (laughs) I mean, I used to, I, 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 first off, I didn't know that G4 came back, but I definitely, there was two reasons I watched. I'm not a big gamer, obviously. So you know that. I was definitely watching for the hot women <laughs> and I did enjoy and you had a playboy playmate on there, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's Olivia Munn and Sarah Underwood are two of my favorites of all time. Um, but I also was watching cause I, I thought they did pretty decent. I, they were like one of the only things on TV that was covering like San Diego comic con. Yeah. So I would watch oh, yeah. their San Diego comic con coverage as well. Right. But, yeah. uh, I had no idea it came back and I guess there's a lot of controversy, I guess. And, Looks like they're trying I mean, to be. A, a legit I would check streamer. it out. I tried to check it out, and it was fun. But like, I like Kevin Pereira. I thought he always was very quick witted, and I thought he thought he should be doing more stuff. But he kind of got relegated to like, I think he was like living in like a, a, a RV or something before the G four relaunched. I thought I like Kevin Pereira, so he's back. Yeah, he's back, and Adam Adam Sessler is back. Hmm. But um, Adam Sessler went on a rant hating hating Republicans, telling that Republicans that are all, they're all pieces of shit, which you know, some of them are, but like, you know, but what I wouldn't say like that. Like the one. So they're, are they, they have an actual channel, but then they're streaming. Is that there's, what it is? It looks like there's a YouTube channel and they're trying to get it on like Verizon Fios and Xfinity. It is, it, it is on Fios. I've oh, on seen Fios. it on Fios. Fios. Yeah. Cable providers. They're I, trying I would, to get I would say they shouldn't even, they should just go the straight like streaming. Yeah. Twitch and YouTube. audience. Their audience is the most tech savvy audience in the world. They're not going to want to watch. They're no one. They're not watch. that. That audience isn't looking at TV anymore. They they know how to stream. Yeah, I don't know. That's just my thought. Uh, let's see. No, this it should just be a YouTube channel. Yeah, it should just be. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, well, G four doesn't need it. It's irrelevant now, right? G like put it this way. G four existed in a time where you had nobody covering San Diego, right? You had nobody covering video games. Right. You had nobody covering nerd shit. There are shit. so many other options and now. And you yeah. literally, after the explosion of YouTube, they became irrelevant. People yeah. just, I could go, I could go and find like a thousand people who do in-depth comic book, hey, us, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, t- reviews and shit that uh, we can trust. Yeah. You're and that are not correct. like, yeah, so... And more, and have actually something to offer rather than just look hot. Although, I've been looking up the top fifteen sexy. Anthony, hosts don't sell G4. yourself short. You know, you look <laughs> hot to me. Thank you. But <laughs> looking up the top fifteen G four sexiest hosts uh, has been come very pleasurable this last oh, three minutes. Oh, that's an interesting list. Yeah, their YouTube channel has four hundred ninety two thousand. Kaylee, she's a hot fucking woman. 
Sorry. Continue. <laughs> no, we're done. Everybody go watch G4 TV. I guess. I don't know. Uh, also out this week, here's another show. Resident Alien is coming back for a second season on sci-fi. That's the Alan Tudyk show where he plays an alien who lives in a, up, uh, in a rural area. It's fucking great. It's a great show. Candace Bailey. <laughs> oh, Candace. <laughs> Brugs, where can the listener find you online? We're done. <laughs> I, I, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Really Rug Boy. Come by and say hello. Give me a follow. Follow me. Follow all of us. Check the show notes for all the links to all that fun stuff. Share the show with your best friend, with your mom, with your aunt, with your uncle, with anyone you know. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's the Nerd. We'll keep you next time. Looking at two poor girls. That's what. I fucking loved it. Jogging nerd.